uh, six Glenfarclas family casks, including this meeting's being recorded in case you didn't catch that. Um, how do I get that off my screen? There we go. Uh, so we've got six family casts set aside for this, including one that I've got four or five bottles tucked away for people taking part in the tasting because I know they're going to want them. Uh, so that's cool. That's coming up next Saturday. Uh, what else is next? Bourbon Bonanza, Evan, and presumably someone else, not me, because I'm not a bourbon guy. Uh, Evan's got some cool things planned for this. A couple of bottles tucked away in the office, as it were. Uh, so you won't want to miss that. Uh, Whiskey Trail with Julie Hamilton and Celine Tattoo. That's coming up June 25th. 45 bucks. Uh, people who take part in that tasting are going to get first crack at the retro cars and video game label um, whiskey trail bottles, which are extremely cool. And we've got, we've already got people asking if we, they can get some of the Nintendo whiskey, which is awesome. Um, but we're not releasing it till the night of the tasting. So people who take part in it will get first crack at some of those bottles. Um, and then I think there's, oh yeah, the Canada Day tastings. How could I forget? Uh, Shelter Point with Jacob and Leon on Tuesday, June 29th. And then Two Brewers with uh, Bob Baxter of Two Brewers Brewing, Two Brewers Whiskey rather, Yukon Brewing and Distilling on Wednesday, June 30th. So lots of cool events coming up. Um, I'll share the link to our website. I'm sure most of you guys know what that is for the tasting page. But uh, Evan, that's a wrap on what's coming up. Evan, do you know you're muted? Okay, let me try that again. Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome to the June of 2021 uh, Scotch Malt Whiskey, Whiskey Society of Canada's Outturn. Uh, we have, uh, like we do in the summer months, six new bottles for you and one returning bottle uh, in the Outturn. And uh, yeah, that's about all we need to say about that beyond uh, the preamble that Andrew had with the other tastings we have going on. A uh, pretty cool lineup with a few different bottlings uh, or distilleries we haven't seen in a while. So I figured we might as well just hop right into it uh, with the June turn here. Uh, whiskey number one, hopefully you guys did get a pamphlet. Uh, we did have most of them stapled before they started getting picked up. So hopefully you did, guys did get that. Otherwise just follow along. Uh, we are starting with whiskey number one, which is titled Esoteric Gibberish. And it is from a second fill ex bourbon barrel, 214 bottles from the outturn, 58.6% alcohol. Oh, Peter, I'm sorry you didn't get a pamphlet. Um, I will see if I can uh, fire that into the tasting at some point here. Evan, I'll, I'll look for that. So continue, carry on as it were, and I'll find that uh, attachment. Sounds good. Just don't do the cheat sheet yet. What do you think on the nose, Cam? Well, so far, I like it. Looks like mm -hmm. it's a good tasting tonight, just on the first one. Yeah, the society mentions fresh fabrics, snap twigs, linens, burlap cloth. It does have a little bit of that, not really dusty, but that sort of uh, just that burlap note to it. A lot of linen notes in there as well for me. Yeah, the mossy potting, mossy mm -hmm. potting sheds. Mm -hmm. Getting that on there too. A little bit of a, just a slight yeasty beer note on there for me as well. Todd, am I frozen in time because of my shirt? Is that a, a reference to this ball or shirt? Mark's is a bit minty. There's some savory tones there and a little bit of like a, a minerally note. I get um, almost like you've taken something kind of savory and filtered it through a, a bounce sheet. There's a little bit of a floral note too. That's kind yeah. of yeah. It's got like a like not really oniony, but like a, a fried onion ring note for me. So the uh, the blind out turn is now the PDF is on the chat for anyone who uh, didn't get a paper copy of it. Thanks, Andrew. Todd, I think it's you that's frozen, buddy. I think Andrew and everybody is moving just fine. He has actually been doing the robot this whole time. Actually, for a second there, I thought Don was frozen, um, but 
I think he was just tipping his head back to try to release some heat. I'm getting some nice uh, fruit on it as well on the nose. Yeah, yeah, especially after the first sip, it does go a little bit fruitier on the on the nose as well. Society mentions honeycomb in there, and I get a bit of that. I find it very herbal on the mm -hmm. nose, like a ton of herbal tones to it. Like reminds me of like honey and sage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the honey notes on the palate as well, along with uh, a bit of a candied ginger note, but you still get the heat from the ginger at the end. I think I like the nose better than the, mm -hmm. the taste. A little bit of uh, macadamia nuts in there on the finish for me as well. It's not a bad whiskey. It's, uh, I don't think it's gibberish. It is maybe a little bit all over the map, but it's not just like way out of left field or anything. Getting the pe pepper on it as well. Mm -hmm. Peppery. It's that good kind of noise in a whiskey that, you know, it, it's yeah. somehow kind of harmonious in its own way. Like there is enough that comes together to make it interesting. Sorry, guys, I'm getting a call from Kensington Wine Market. I'm going to answer this one. <laughs> Before the rest of us get called, please. At, at least uh, as far as the nose goes, um, adding water seemed to be almost an improvement for me. It took away a bit of that herbaceous edge. It's made it a bit more approachable and it's really brought the honey and some of those fruit notes forward. Yeah. Yeah. It goes into uh, like, uh, like this, it's, it's just shining sunlight on your grass after on your lawn after it rained uh, yeah. on the nose. Well, I'm getting like a lot of bright citrus now, like orange grapefruit. Yeah. I'm getting that too. It's um, it's better on the palate too with water, I think. Yeah. Mark, I'm getting a, a lot more of that mint note on the on the, with water uh, that you're mentioning there. Yeah, Todd, I, I agree. The warm printer toner tasting note. Maybe our Xerox machine just added that on its own. It does have just like this, like if you're trying to go in that direction, it does have just that that sort of fresh ink note to it. Like like if you just, like if you smelled this booklet after, after it was coming off our Xerox, which mm. is uh, an, a beast uh, and an abomination, that Xerox machine that we have. So maybe it just, maybe it's the only one that makes that smell, I'm not sure. Hey Evan, I think Troy's, um... Maybe feeling a little envious here, wondering if you have air conditioning, asking in a roundabout yeah. way. There's, uh, I'm, I'm that guy that never got out of his basement, I guess, right now. Well, I've actually come down to mine because I just, even on the main level, it's just, this tasting is not going to happen. This is, I think this is, maybe it's because I turned, uh, turned it up so it wasn't running all the time. This is the first time the AC hasn't been running in the background in about four hours right now. It's got a slight just bit of like a, a cheese edge to it on the nose right now too with the water. Yeah, to be honest, I, I it wasn't wowing me without water, but I think, and this is not something that you hear me say a lot, but it, it does quite well with water. I'm really yep. enjoying it. Um, and that strength, the 58.6 with the water in there doesn't really come across at all. Mm -hmm. Right on, well, let's try number two. Number two is called Toasted Marshmallows. 562 bottles from the Outturn, 55.6% alcohol. Quite the color on this one, too. Ooh. Big difference on the nose here. Right into like uh, Rancio and balsamic vinegar for me. Are we, are we going into the one of these things is not like the others moments? Quite possibly. Hey, guys, I'm really sorry to interrupt. Andrew. Hey. The uh, extra tasting kits in your office for tonight, are they spoken for for anybody? I don't even know. No. Oh, no. They're they're for sale if someone wants them. Sorry. One more time. Was that no? They're yes. for sale. You can take them. Well, it's the two people that bought multiple kits or had paid for a kit, haven't got them and are at the shop waiting to get their stuff. Yeah, they can take them. Okay. Yeah. Hey, Chloe, did you hear that? 
That was a conference call right there. Yeah. <laughs> People getting an inside peek into a part of yeah. Kensington wine market they don't see very often. Yeah. This is uh, this is what happens behind the scenes. The bus, the bunch of us just going, I don't know. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. That, sorry, go ahead. Um, brown sugar, candied nuts. Mm -hmm. I'm getting some leather and tobacco in here. I mean, it in a way yeah. it comes across like almost cherry cask. Yeah. Cherry wood tobacco. And just cherries as well for me. A little bit of black licorice. Lots of leather notes. You got some cotton candy on the nose. Mm. Oh, big spice bomb on the palate. Yeah. Yeah, I tons of fruit and dried fruit, but that, that spice is prevailing. I don't get the toasted marshmallow um, for me. It, it doesn't come across mm -hmm. like that at all. To me, it's more like you think of those ginger molasses cookies. Yeah. Like big spices, yeah. demerara sugar. That's the yep. direction this is going. Yeah, I agree. Ginger molasses cookies, blackstrap molasses itself, that leather note again. So um, we, have, we have a few people guessing this is a rum. It definitely has some rum-like notes on the nose um, for me. Not The, the mouthfeel isn't quite there for a rum on the palate for me, but uh, who knows at this point. So I guess looking at the bottle, it doesn't, uh, I'm just trying to see, there's very few clues given there. Mm -hmm. what could this be you know having said that though in the notes about the rum it i could see this being poured well like this in a blind whiskey tasting tonight yeah. and people i mean obviously people know the society bottles other things but not knowing that if we just done a pure blind tasting a lot of people tasting this would would probably have no idea um that this was out of place at all yeah. Yeah, I agree. It does have a lot of the earmarks for like uh, an older whiskey, say, or a, or a sherry whiskey. Uh, well, not even way. just yeah. that, Evan. Like uh, the one thing it's kind of reminding me a little bit of on the palate is that uh, Compass Box Stri Spice Tree Extravaganza. Is that what it was called? Yeah. It was like it was like Spice Tree, but taken to like the next level. Yeah. We're getting those big toasted oak notes too. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Mark Gerard kind of refers to that too, where he's talking about char or rubber. Um, it does have a bit of a rubber-like note. And again, that is almost, or it is very rum-like, uh, especially on the nose for that. Anybody tried it with water yet? Yeah, I did. Yeah, it didn't, uh, didn't hurt it. Mm -hmm. I'm reluctant to, because I'm actually kind of enjoying it too much as it is. Hey, uh, Kurt, if you're done strumming your guitar, what, what are your thoughts on this thing? I actually, there's, it's, there's a little bit of an irony here because I don't like black licorice and this has that anise black licorice, licorice all sorts, snowed all over. Totally it. does. Yep. And I, I adore this. This is beautiful. I think there's like a, a nice dark cherry tempered note that's working with the licorice. Really cool. See, I thought you were saying it was an irony and I was starting to get that blood <laughs> note. <laughs> Kurt's got to have go for a bloodletting to like restore yeah. balance. <laughs> That's right. Um, I, Kurt, I, I lost a bit, little bit of respect for you when you said you don't like licorice. Mm. I don't know why I can't do it. Red licorice, like the fake stuff. I love it. <laughs> Who thought that that your your opinion of them could go lower? Eh? <laughs> There's always lower. There's always lower. <laughs> Yeah, I think this takes the water really well. It kind of stretches out the, the dried fruit note before the spice comes in on the palate. Uh, so I'm with you, Cam. Yeah, I, I don't think it hurt it at all. Yeah, the licorice um, note's still there, but it's much more into the, those red fruit and dried fruit notes. Mm -hmm. I, I gotta say has... for my part, sorry, real quick, is I actually still like it with better without. Yeah. Um, I would never sure. add water to this again. I like the finish. There's like this... Um orange zest with a little bit of like the watermelon rind as you've gone through all the pink into like the white and green yeah. on the palette on the finish kind of thing. Well, and, uh, like if you've ever had uh, uh, Benedictine liqueur, 
Yeah, it's, it's essentially like like veering into Grand Marnier, but it's got cloves as yeah. one of the base base notes on it, and and it does have a lot of that that sort of almost astringent clove note on that on the finish there too. Mm -hmm. Kim, I agree with Kim. I think water knocks it down too much. It does recover yeah. a bit. Um, also, Chelsea backing Kurt up in his dislike of licorice. <laughs> Chelsea, I want to remind you, you're still in your three month <laughs> probationary window here, so. You know, and also Chelsea, you. I remember you telling me multiple times that you weren't able to attend this. So why are you here? <laughs> <laughs> cold, man, cold. Cool. Now we got another moderator. Okay, on to number three. Number three is titled Cherries, Fairies, and Salted Berries. That almost could have been the name for the last one. Uh, two different casks mentioned here. Uh, Ex-Bourbon Hogshead and a first fill Spanish Oak Hogshead. Uh, 248 bottles from the outturn, 57.2% alcohol. Mm. Like salted toffee and... Uh, Mm -hmm. Salted caramel and a, a little bit of ozone right off the hop there. Salted caramel and overcooked shortbread. Oh, yeah. I have to say, like, there is kind of a faint, like, wet hay or barnyardy note, too. Good call. <laughs> my wife just said it was probably on my upper lip as she walked away. <laughs> She needs to start sitting in on these. I think she's got the comments. Oh boy, you you guys haven't been hearing it, but she's been peanut gallerying this for a <laughs> couple of minutes, so the pressure's off. Guys, for an extra two ninety nine an hour, you can get the, her her voice <laughs> on this as well. Oh yeah, that could be its whole YouTube channel. <laughs> Peter said he gets the cherries, but maybe that's just a suggestion. This is definitely not like, you know, loud kind of cartoonish candy cherry. It's more like just dark, fresh, rich fruit, like really, yeah. really rich cherry. This I, is I into guess. like, like where the last one was like black forest to the point of mm. fruit cake. This one's more of that sort of real maraschino, maraschino and, and mm. sort of fresh cherry notes, cherry cobbler even. Yeah. I don't get it so much on the palate though. Um, mm -hmm. It's it's way more prevalent on the nose. I I can kind of see that. Yeah, like a cherry pie or going into yeah. like like a mixed berry pie note on the nose. Um, it yeah. does remind me of that. I've got that Luxardo. Luxar it's not there's like a, I don't know if it's that cherry liqueur. If that's the maraschino liqueur. Remind, yeah, it does remind me a little bit of that. If Brian talked to you into buying it, then it's probably the maraschino mm -hmm. liqueur. I don't think there's another way to make a blood and sand though. I'm pretty well, sure enough. that's what I, I'm pretty sure that's what I needed it for. I'm getting Hirsch. very yeah. salt, salty licorice on the, yeah. Note on the palate. Yeah, it does have a bit of a burnt note. And you can like, uh, it's like you're making donuts on the nose as well, where you like, you have that yeasty dough with that, the, the sugar in it as well. And the well, saltiness. It's it's donut territory on the palate for sure. Mm -hmm. Like doughy, fruity. There's some nice salty tones there. I don't know if this was the last society out turn or maybe it was um, Kurt and I doing either signatory or Cooper's choice, but I, it's reminding me again of that uh, jelly donut, carrot cake donut, mm -hmm. like the deep fried carrot cake, a bit of like mm. um, cream cheese icing, mm -hmm. but also I'm also getting maple bacon. Um, yeah. A little bit of maple bacon donut. On too. the finish for sure. Uh, I'm getting that. Uh, Chris Walker says Brian needs a good call. Salt the toffee. Uh, Ken Ludwig says, says dill pickle chips, which, which is a really cool note. Uh, Kim Parsons says a, a whip of vinegar, um, probably to go along with that dill pickle note. It does have just a, a slightly sour note on the on the palate there that is really hard to 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 nail down, but it is, is going into vinegar or dill territory for me there, mm -hmm. along with the saltiness. 
like English style fish and chips, maybe with the malt vinegar on it. Did you add water yet? I did. Having it's, too much uh, fun. Yeah, it's uh, it goes into more like a salted peanut territory on the nose with water for me. I thought it brought the um, the donuts out on the nose too. Yeah, yeah, it does go in that direction too more. Almost like uh, like it's a bit chocolatey, like you're getting into Reese's peanut butter cups as well. Did you ever try those? Um, Starbucks comes out with it at Christmas time ish. The creme brulee lattes. Yeah, yep. there's a note of that on the finish too that takes you into. Andrew's shaking his head, and I'm with him on this one. I've only tasted it because my wife buys them all the time. When Andrew, you, they will make it as a quad shot if you order it like that. <laughs> yeah, and they'll probably put it in like a 20 ounce glass. Like <laughs> if I wanted to drink milk, I'd drink milk at home. Um, I could even steam it. Um, we yeah, shared enough know. coffees. I'm a black coffee guy like you. You know that, right? Don't yeah. don't hate me for the creme brulee latte comment. <laughs> well, it's the it's also the pumpkin spice. Like I just don't. I yeah. don't, I can't even, I can't even, um, water. I know Cam yeah. said he put some in like it's salt and pepper easy. chicken wings on the nose and palate now oh. with the water. I, I wouldn't put water in it again. I yeah. think it's better without water. Yeah. I, I don't love it with water, but Evan, the second you said the chicken wings, um, I, I know this is, this is going back in uh, a long time, but like 25 years ago at Shanks on the cloud trail, they used to make chicken fingers with captain crunch. So that was Ooh. the breading that they used. This is like chicken fingers with captain crunch breading. It's, we're going to, we're going to make them super hot and then just murder your mouth, the top of your mouth with those <laughs> chicken wings. Kills the palate. I think it yeah. just sort of, mm -hmm. Yeah. The water the, flattens it out. The, the cherry note is completely gone with that, for sure. Better without water. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's a very balanced whiskey, honestly. No. But I think it's absolutely fascinating, and I want one. Yeah. Like, <laughs> the is. nose on that is so fun to nose. There's so much mm -hmm. to pull out of it. And the palate keeps evolving. And I think the finish on it is so cool and so unique. Um, yeah, I'm... I can't wait because I don't know either. I'm doing these blindly just for shits and giggles with everybody else. Um, I can't wait to hear what this one is. Well, without spoiling it too much, I got to say the last time we had a bottle from these guys, it was one of those. And I think you're going to potentially remember it, Kurt, where it, uh, I think both of it, I thought it was just maybe whole hum, but it sold out like before it hit the shelves. Mm. So, and this one might not be far off that. No, no, it's, uh, I think it's going to be one that's pretty sought after. Okay, on to Spock's Earwax for number four. Uh, another cast finish, started its life in an ex bourbon hogshead, finished in a new oak, uh, number four heavily charred oak, oak, oak hogshead. Uh, 279 bottle, 97 bottles from the Outturn Story and 55.2% alcohol. So although it's a hogshead, so 250 liters in size, number four heavily charred new oak cask, if it was American oak, would be very similar to what you'd be uh, putting bourbon into uh, if you were making uh, bourbon whiskey. Although some, some places use a number three instead of a number four. I get a big hit of like olive oil right off the bat on the nose. Oh, that's a good call. Now... Evan, um, I don't remember what was said, but I believe we poured this one. I don't know if it was an outturn tasting or, uh, or am I, I don't know if hopefully I'm not giving something away there, but I believe we, I, I personally may have crossed some lines talking about this one. Um, possibly maybe. I don't know. Yeah, I, I, I think he came full out as a, as a star Wars geek more than anything else. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm definitely a Star Wars guy over Star uh, or Star Trek guy over Star Wars. I have to say, it's the jumpsuits, isn't it? <laughs> they're they're pretty awesome. Yeah. Brian says a hint of Romulan ale with a strong whiff of sorry and brandy. That's I like that, Brian. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I can appreciate that reference. I don't think I can come up with that myself. I'm not quite that, <laughs> uh, but I do watch every single new series that comes out. Mm -hmm. A little bit peanutty on the nose again. 
some grape jelly going on there too. It was immediately more fruity than the last one. Mm -hmm. More, more vibrantly juicy fruity, I should say anyways, because I did start to pick up more and more on those deep threads of cherry in the last one by the time I put it down, but this is way jammier. So lush too. Loads of vanilla. There is quite an intense waxiness, especially mid palate moving into the finish. Mm -hmm. Definitely not synth hall. Thank you, Zach. <laughs> you know, did they ever fully clarify what synth, like whether there was any actual alcohol in synth hall? Could you get drunk off of it? I haven't seen it, but apparently they've, they've gotten further into what it is on uh, some of the, the newer shows like Discovery. Okay. Alcohol with no drunkenness. I mean, not that I look at that as an end point, um, but I mean. It's just not as fun if you're not walking the sword's edge. Is that, is yeah, that what you're saying? I mean, everyone should try to stay on the right side of that uh, razor's edge. But uh, the journey to that point is all the fun. Mark, I'm, I'm going to need a reference for you for that. Like you're going to actually have to save the episode or it doesn't count with PNG there. <laughs> Pretty tasty. Like it's, it's a little bit maybe subtle on, on the palate, but it's got this, this sort of waxy fruit note. Those salted peanuts coming through again for me. I, I don't know that it's subtle, Evan. I mean, I I, yeah. I would say it's more, and I think this is that virgin oak, that new oak finishing. Yeah. It it does it does make it a tad more one dimensional, mm -hmm. but the dimensions that's there is quite nice. Like it's pleasant. Yeah. I like the flavors, but I mean, this all comes down to why single malt is a better spirit than bourbon, um, because it's not drowning in oak. It's not just like a blanket of oak trying to cover and smother everything. Yeah, that would be hilarious if this was a bourbon. <laughs> it would be funny, but it's not. Yeah. Mark says aged grappa note in there. Aged grappa. Hmm. Man, Lyle actually found or referenced the episode too. That's this is good. You know, like you know, I, I grew up thinking I was just like, there's, I'm, I'm too, too nerdy on this stuff. And then I finally found my people after all these the, years. Evan, uh, <laughs> the post Borg assimilation, Evan, <laughs> the great, the great thing about people doing this at home, possibly on their computer is they could have two screens going or put the one screen down. Yeah, they're, they're actually Google search it. Well, they're, they're probably actually watching the episode now on Netflix at the same time. Yeah. Or they're like on a forum and they're asking like real Trek nerds to find this information yeah. for them quickly. Yeah. They're crowdsourcing it. Yeah, smart. I was reading the comments too quickly, looked away to see what the noise was over in the corner and Mark's comment jumped out at me. I thought it said barrel-aged grandpa. <laughs> I was like, that's the best tasting <laughs> note I've ever read in my life. Well, there's been tasting notes in the past referencing you know, older people, like maybe not with the society. That barrel aged grandpa could be a Scotch malt whiskey society bottle. That that could be, but again, it would also provide an opportunity yeah. for some parallel jokes. Yeah, it's from Aberdelphi, Mark. <laughs> what do you think with water, guys? I like the nose with water, but I think water kind of killed it. Mm -hmm. I actually like the palate a bit more with water. Yeah. Yeah, it does get a little bit softer, but uh, I, I don't know. There's just something about the, the fruit in there and, and how it hits. I really like a little bit of like really like peach notes, apricots, a little bit of like really ripe lemon as well. Back in the day when I worked uh, in the oil patch, I worked around Vulcan and uh, mm -hmm. this was long, many years ago. And I bought some Vulcan ears while I was there. <laughs> So after a couple of weeks of being out in the field, I came home and my daughter was about four at the time and I, and I walked in the house with Vulcan ears on. She wanted nothing to do with me. <laughs> you think it was the ears? Yeah, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> That's like, what the, like the time I, I shaved my beard uh, off and the, the kids kind of freaked out. 
Well, I'm, I'm going through something similar with my nephew when I go over to see him because my brother and I bear a bit of a resemblance, but he has no beard and mm -hmm. our voices apparently are quite similar. And when I look at him and start talking to him, it's like he thinks it's his dad, but he knows there's something <laughs> different. And you can tell him, you can see him trying to work it through in his tiny little brain. Nice. Uh, it's pretty cute. Okay, on to number five. This this whiskey is literally named for me, Evan. I'm just cluing into it right now. <laughs> no kidding. That, that um, could be your autobiography right there. Yeah, it, your should, title. it should be. Espresso to the power of four. From a first fill Spanish oak sherry butts, 596 bottles from the outturn, 64.5% alcohol. And the Sheldon says, wow, dark. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lyle. I love the nose on this one. It's the Dyson Spear episode. Brian, I see the name Stovall in there. Um, I don't know if that was directed to me, but that's actually my cousin. I don't know if you knew that. Because um, I don't know too, I, I don't even know anyone else named Stovall. So I can only imagine that's where that's coming from. But uh, um, yeah, if my nephew had to deal with that too, I would just take it to like, another level of confusion. I think he actually meant Stobel Core, which is the Klingon afterlife. Oh, well, maybe maybe my, my uncle was secretly a Trek, <laughs> Trek nerd and um, that's where Stobel's name came from because I don't, for the life of me, know where it came from. There's a, like a number two, this has a little bit of that balsamic thing going on again. Yeah, I was, I was gonna say Italian salad dressing again, but. Oh, that's a good call. That's my favorite uh, tasting note. It's so cough syrupy. Yeah. yeah it's, you know, it, it tastes great and it works. It, it, it's one of those ones though, where like, I think we had a, um, a society bottle at one point called close to the edge of extreme. Mm -hmm. And I think in terms of this style, that sherried style, it's getting close to the edge of it. Just yeah. overcooked. It's, yeah. it's like, is it whiskey anymore? Kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this this has all the hallmarks of like hot climate maturation, oversaturation, wet fill barrel. Like it's really licorice. It's like um, one of your coffees, Andrew, where it's like so many <laughs> shots of espresso in an Americano. They fill yeah. up the cup before they can add water to it. You know? Yeah, guys, like, you try this at home if you want. Like if you <laughs> stick a spoon in there, it just stands straight up. <laughs> it's like you've taken oh. that and stirred in just a touch of like really dark yeah. chocolate, right? Yeah. Or the spoon just melts like into the <laughs> Can you imagine what his guts are like? <laughs> I, I, very regular. Let me just say that. Very regular. <laughs> I just mean they must be made of fucking steel. Pardon me, <laughs> well, but man. My wife claims that because she's always like, I can't believe you're eating that. And nothing ever goes wrong. <laughs> but I mean, like food, I think food lasts longer than most people think. <laughs> I, the palate, I think, I, I, Kurt, I agree with you on this. The palate is, I mean, if if I didn't know any better, I'd be like, this has got to be a Jim Jim Swan style spirit. Yeah. Like, this this is going into like STR shave toasted recharred. That that char wine Yeah, is yeah. is right there. This is um, this is like a late night contemplative kind of dram for me. Mm -hmm. um, I don't have a lot of these only because there aren't a lot of these available, unfortunately. But I love these as like a really, really late night whiskey after I, you know, lambasted my palate with five, six, eight other drams. I love sitting down with something like this and slowing it down at the end of the night. Or so, it's a six o'clock and you're on your way to the store for Wednesday order morning. <laughs> like in place of in place of your quad shot. Get this instead. <laughs> If there's any police listening, he does not do that. Yes, this is not an on your way to work thing. <laughs> right before he it. gets on, on the lime scooter. I think this one's great. I'm loving it. Yeah. This is this is like I think I've talked about this before. Like this is beyond it in scale. Like it's way beyond Sherry Bomb territory. And this is like into like sherry fallout or sherry tactical new where it's just <laughs> it takes everything to and just raises the bar exponentially yeah. on the amount of sherry in there yeah. do we still well, call this whiskey right yeah 
Yeah. In a good way. Let's talk about the strength too. 64 and a half. Like mm -hmm. I haven't added water to, my, to mine, partly because I don't find sherried whiskeys take it very well. Mm -hmm. um, and also because even at 64 and a half, it's just not fighting me. Mm -hmm. No, it, it drinks very well for that, for sure. And uh, again, without spoiling who it's from, I'm not typically a fan of this distillery because I find a lot of their shared stuff to be just like dumpy. Me too. Yeah. Well, and, or, and this does not go into dumpy territory because the sherry is so big. Or not just dumpy. I think, let's be honest, a lot of times it goes into either sulfured or that yeah. like really dry, nutty, like yeah. over the top, dry, nutty style of sherry. Yeah. A bit more into like Terry's chocolate orange uh, on the nose with water. All right. Mark says this is a great Christmas season dram. Totally agree, Mark. Yeah. Good call. It's for yeah, summer Christmas. Christmas. Yeah. Summer solstice. And I can give you all my wish list if you want to. So. <laughs> yeah, you might be onto something there, Mark. Oh. And Chris mm -hmm. says charred sponge toffee. I like yeah. that one too. That's a good note. Makes me think of those uh, that toffee candy that you'd eat, actually. Well, it's it's interesting because you do get that big char note, but it's not like astringent, burnt, like like just like ugh. It, it's just part of the whole. Uh, with that being said, yeah, the sponge toffee got me thinking of uh, the uh, those chocolate bars. The um, uh, oh yeah, are they? I know what you're talking about. Crunchy bars. Yeah, crunchy bars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Good pull. Okay, let's leave that one and go on to Apocalypse Cow. Do we have to? Yeah, just for the name alone, we have to. <laughs> this is an awesome name. Uh, first Phil X Bourbon Barrel, 223 bottles from the outturn, 59% alcohol. I think there's a hint right in the, uh, the uh, write-up of where this one is, isn't there? There might be. Yeah. First line. I I have to say, like, before, this is the one I probably was most excited about trying in the entire mm -hmm. lineup. Um, you know, they so they mentioned Campbelltown, which you guys can all see. And I, Mark, I didn't even see that, I swear. But I, I totally agree with you. The nose is full on Kalila right now, where it's that salted lime margarita note uh, that we get on so many of the SMWS Kalilas. Uh, into mezcal margarita notes where you get the salted rim, the lime note, and that that funky smokiness there as well. Here's one from the vaults. Andrew, you might remember this. A long, long, long time ago, there was a Gordon McPhail Kalila. It was a 1995, with like a green metal tin. Um, I think it was probably only a 10 or a 12 year old, but a massive, slightly sherried Kalila. This is all over the nose on that, like mm -hmm. all over it. I would blindly guess, guess this as Kalila too, I yeah. think right now. It's going into like a, like really gamey salami notes. So, uh, yeah, go ahead. I was going to say Kalila for me though. I, I mean, I can see where you guys are going with that, but Kalila for me is like, I think we've talked about this before. It's the Chardonnay of Scotch whiskeys. It can be so many different things. Mm -hmm. And just saying it's Kalila doesn't always clearly identify what you're getting. Mm -hmm. This to me, I mean, you don't see this very often, but it's almost reminding me of like, um, like young spring bank, but not from a fresh cast, like from a yeah. refill cast. Like it has that maritime element. The peat in here is very like that edge is like very, very soft. Yeah. It's where they, Just, they, before they refilled the cast, the cask actually fell apart in the dunnage warehouse. They scraped it off, off the mushroom ridden floor and then put it back together. Mm -hmm. After rolling it through a bunch of cow shit. Yeah. <laughs> this is but in a good way, like it's, oh, it's yeah. still, the nose is beautiful. Like uh, Pauly Sporin, Austin says, I get into like dead all notes. Uh, good in call. There. Yeah. Uh, antiseptic notes like mouthwash, uh, like Listerine. It's I think that, the, sorry, go element ahead, that's, the other elements that, that's there and it's there on the nose and on the palate is that oiliness. Mm -hmm. This is a very specific to me kind of oiliness. Yeah. 
Yeah, I agree with the oiliness. And Peter, I, I agree with you as well. A little bit of pear on the end. Um, it's all like if you can imagine, like step back in time to uh, more than a year, year and a half ago now, where we used to have the peasant cheese boards. Um, and it is almost like a conglomeration of everything on that peasant cheese board in a way. Yeah. Where you get the, the, the char <clears throat> charcuterie, sorry, but they, they used to have those dried pears in there. And it's got just a hint of that mm -hmm. on the nose and palate as well. I'm, I'm trying to interpret Chris Walker's comment there. Is he referring to the taste of Marlon Brando's sweat in the jungle? Is that what his, <laughs> his comment is a reference to? I mean, I'm, I'm just guessing. Essence of General Kurtz in a, with a hint of Joseph Conrad. This has got a lot, to... lot of layers to it. Yeah. Just even, you know, if you peel back yeah. some of the, uh, some of the, the peat, on it, like I'm getting some citrus in it, maybe some vanilla in it. On the name, like it, it I, I do agree with you, Chris, like the, the I love the apocalypse now, like uh, reference on this one. I think in in my write up, I'll have to get the blog done at some point, but uh, for this one I mentioned, like it's it's like the opening to apocalypse now on the helicopter, on the choppers as they're flying by, but you're on your way to Campbelltown instead of uh, in the middle of Vietnam. With this is the end blaring in the background. Yeah, I, this is the end, or I was going more for Ride of the Valkyries. Yeah, yeah. There's, um, there's like some malt vinegar and like a, a really kind of sweaty cheese note on the nose too that I like, and it's definitely got that farminess that is a little surprising. I think yeah. Andrew and Evan at least know my passion for those farmy, mm -hmm. funky whiskeys. You know the Ben Nevis, Springbank, Long Row, Port Charlotte, Broris, yeah. those that have that farminess to them. I love that. This has got yeah. the spades. So I'm getting like, you know, there's salted caramel, but this is like salted vanilla ice cream. Yeah. Nice. So, but mm -hmm. without the caramel. Yeah. And that, well, that vanilla note to me uh, screams one specific Campbelltown distillery. Uh, but that could just be me. There's a lot going on with this one. Yeah. It's, it's a cool dram. It is. It, it doesn't <laughs> disappoint. And I know we're at that point where like, has anyone tried adding water to it? And my sample's almost gone and I don't want to add any water to it. No, I don't either. This is why I brought the bottles home. <laughs> a little bit of salt and vinegar, potato chips in there uh, coming out a bit more with water. And those, uh, those old Dutch sour cream and onion rings that you can get. Uh, Mark, it's uh, a ladder. It's, uh, no, it's because it still has a P. Oh, yes. Yeah, sorry, I missed the, yeah. the lack of a P. You're you got to go right in the middle of those two, Mark. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's it's literally Campbelltown. You yeah. don't, it's like kind of how you can try to phonetically say Calgary. And yeah. depending on how you say it, we know that you either have lived or spent a considerable amount of time here or you're from Ontario. Yeah. Or you can just call it the Wee Tune. <laughs> We're going downtown Calgary. Yeah, that vanilla note and goes uh, even into like vanilla ice cream, but uh, also vanilla custard uh, notes uh, with water on the palate. It's, it's just fine both ways. Right. Yeah, I I'd say on uh, the balance of uh, probabilities here, or you know yes. all the different things i like it better without but it's still very nice with water i think it does start to um release some of these more exotic fruits that you start to see mm -hmm. with bottlings of this distillery and it's one of those things that i love to marvel at how this distillery produces them but i think a lot of the time it relates to how whiskey is made there and the reasons why it was made yeah. that way at this particular Distillery, I'm desperately trying not to name. Yeah. That's Springbank staff, like said that they were working there at the time, but they just actually took a, like yeah, a the, 50 casts of local barley over and just said, yeah, that's uh, the spirit that we dumped out of there that day. They just leave for, they'd leave for, you know, they'd get a fermentation going, leave for two weeks, come back, distill <laughs> it. Yeah. Okay, last but not least, on to a vintage dinner suit. From a refill expert in Hogshead, 259 bottles from the Ocher and 56.1% alcohol.
Hey, Evan. Um, mm-hmm. I just was monitoring Facebook. Andreas Engel said, hey, Evan. Oh. I guess he didn't notice the Kurt, Cam, and Andrew. Um, but he wanted <laughs> oh. very specifically to say hi to Evan. No you feeling that start, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm just, hi, Andreas. I'm just joking. <laughs> Ooh, this is uh, this is unusual. Is. Yeah, this is uh, this is a really interesting note. So pickle turnips, um, turnips. Yeah, I can see that. Like so pickle turnips, those pink yeah. ones you get in um, in Donaires. Mm-hmm. But there's even more. So I mentioned olive oil in Spock's ears wa- earwax. There's even more of it in this, and it's not this. I'm not suggesting it's this, but it reminds me of a 40 year old Samaroli um uh Bunahaven mm-hmm. that I had like probably a decade ago that sounds uh, nice. from a friend's from a friend's collection and I just it was one of the oiliest whiskeys I've ever had in my life and this is reminding me of that on the nose it's got that thick viscous well, it's, it's got this this beautiful uh uh green pearl tea note on it as well like it's the 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 green tea pearls as it's opening up as you just put them in the steep water to steep Smells fresh. Yeah. Waking up in the morning after camping. That palette's really cool. Um, hey, Mark. <laughs> spoilers. Spoilers, yeah. Mark. It's okay. I'm kicking them. It doesn't okay. matter. Everybody don't pay attention to Mark. Um, the, uh, the, the, the palette's a little wonky on this. Yep. But like the fruits that are kind of bursting on the palette are really cool. Yeah, fruit, like really fruity, and then like um, puffed wheat squares. I don't get it super super peaty. No, it's it's so much green tea on the nose for me yeah. right now. It's crazy. Fresh cucumber. That's a really good note, Ken. And the palate just so oily. It's like yeah. hanging on to that really thick, viscous oiliness. Yeah, I, you know, I think it holds up, but I, I I almost think I should have put this one before Apocalypse Cow in hindsight. Well, Apocalypse Cow was lightly peated. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. it's... This definitely, the, the peat is definitely, I mean, it's there, but it's not shining through on this. Yeah, Scott, I, I think you might be right on that one. I got uh, menthol on the finish too. You know, Evan, it's funny. I, I think this almost might have gone somewhere between Spocks and espresso, or possibly yep. even before Spocks. Like it's it's so light and so delicate. And I knowing I what this is, I think I know why why it got slotted where it is. But mm-hmm. and the, it does have peat, but it's it's not just peat. Like it, the the peat is really soft versus uh, some other stuff we've seen from this distillery just trying out with water now for kicks sheldon says that makes it water makes it more floral mm. yeah i can see that uh, the tea, green tea has changed into chamomile now for me mm. scott said it says it's a letdown you know i kind of disagree with you scott um it was, it's jumping out more for me now than it did when I, I first ran through the lineup. Uh, it, it is very subtle stuff versus some of the other ones in here. Was, I mean, especially espresso to the power of four, but uh, I think it's uh, got a decent amount of complexity in it too. I Evan, I agree with you on this. I mean, without giving away details, I mean, this is a style that I talk about in a lot of tastings that I like, like whiskey that's you know the oak is not the star this is spirit character driven Mm -hmm. oxidizing in the cask again trying not to give away too much about about it but i mean i think this is really cool there as i said there that first taste on it was a bit kind of like it was bouncing around Mm -hmm. um but I, i liked everything about it and you know i would even hazard to say this is probably the most elegant of the ones in tonight's tasting Elegant, yeah, I, I would agree with that. 
among the more subtle as well, um, for sure. Now that that green tea note, I just cannot get over it. Now that I've noticed it, like I, I just think that's really neat. There's not a lot of whiskeys that I can think of where that just comes to the fore so much for me. Yeah. Now that you mentioned that, like I wasn't. I, I guess I was thinking like green tea in terms of like green tea, but um, mentioning it again, I'm now thinking like that green tea bean paste ice cream things that they have. Yeah. Like yeah. And now it's like, oh yeah, I totally get the green tea reference now. Oh, it's, it's going into like that, uh, like matcha with uh, where they're using a little bit of rice tea or buckwheat with it as well. That's totally matcha. I think uh, water brings the, uh, the tea notes out more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they went away for a, a short time there and then they came back with the vengeance with water. Yeah. Really cool whiskey for me. It is. I like it. Okay. So that is the first time through on our lineup. We might as well just go into the reveal. Are you guys ready for that? Spoiler time. Yeah. Okay. Back to number one. Esoteric gibberish. Evan, while you're going through this, um, yeah. is there some some back end stuff that needs to be looked after? Yeah, do you want to do that while, uh, while I'm doing this or while we're doing this? I'm just going to pour a little bit of more number one because it does kind of get lost in the shuffle versus the, uh, the rest of the lineup for me. I'm, I'm liking it better the second time around. Yeah? Yeah. Anything changed on, on it for you? There's a, it's gone into a little bit of like a, like a pineapple or, or a Jolly Rancher note or those, those sort of uh, the, the, the pina colada or those, those translucent white uh, like uh, lifesavers or life savers, sorry. Key lime pie. Key lime pie, yeah. Little chlorine the second time. That's a good call, Peter. Great fruity palette though. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So uh, mm. Esoteric is from the Highlands. It is 11 years old. Irish Spring. Are you talking about the soap, Dan? Or the commercials? Date is 12th of May, 2009. Yeah, really, uh, the fruit does come out nicely on the palate now. Yeah. And cast number is 77.67. And that makes it Glen Ord Distillery. 77.67 for number one. And uh, price on Esoteric is 135.99. Have we had many uh, Glen Ords? Uh, this is the first one since. Uh, I wasn't going to bring up the slideshow, but I think it will just so I can read my notes on it. If I can find it. Give me a second here. Is this, uh, maybe Andrew, maybe you can answer Peter's question there. Is this typical of their style? You know, that's the tough thing with uh, Glen Ord is that there's been so few bottlings of it, either from independent bottlers or distillers to, to say what kind of style it has. Um, and I can tell you, like, I, I can only think of a handful of bottles of Glen Ord that I've tried. I mean, we've seen some from, from Cadenhead, but, you know, it's been a while since we've seen, uh, you know, society bottlings of this. What was that OB from a few years back, Andrew? I think it came in like a square bottle. Was it a 31, maybe? There was there was a 12-year-old, <clears throat> and I think a th it was, I think a 30-year-old. Oh, that they were the special releases? Yeah, that one was really incredible. Hmm. But I'm with you. I couldn't tell you what the house style is for Glenord. Does is well, Glenord usually um used in blends? Uh it is, but it's also bottled under the Singleton line. And the Singleton line, the uh it's owned by Diageo. Um but they use three different distilleries in the Singleton line. Uh, 
which include Dufftown and Glendullen. Glenord's the only one in the Highlands. Uh, Dufftown and Glendullen are, are really close to each other within Dufftown or around Dufftown. And uh, Glen Fittick Distillery is sort of in the heart of Speyside there. But uh, um, yeah, it's to me, we don't see a lot of them, but they always have this grassiness to them uh, that really stands out for me. And sometimes they go waxy, sometimes they don't, but uh, it isn't a, a distillery that really jumps to mind when, when uh, you're looking at the shelves. Because I think we don't typically get the Glenords over here for Singleton. We get, uh, isn't it Glen Dullum typically? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because the way it works with uh, the Singleton range is they, they package them under the Singleton lineup and then they send certain distilleries of the three to different parts of the world to be sold. So like Asia gets, I think, Dufftown. Europe and uh, the UK get Glendullen and then North America typically gets ordered, if I recall correctly. Or, or pardon me, the Ord and the Glendullen are mixed up there. So um, in terms of is this typical, um, this probably is typical because you're talking refill, bourbon cask, youngish. Um, there probably is some, and say what you will about Diageo, the distilleries they do run, I think they do run them Mm -hmm. with precision so i would say that this is of a young glen of a young glen ord this is probably quite typical yeah, i think that's actually i think you're kind of hitting the nail on the head for one of the most infuriating things about viaggio is they're so big that it, you would love to be able to just write them off and above and and just assume that they don't make good whiskey because of how big they are but they do make some incredible whiskey considering how big they are Yep, deep sigh. Yep. Okay, on to number two, toasted marshmallows. So we had a, a few guesses on this, if it was a rum or mm -hmm. I think somebody else said a uh, cognac or an Armagnac. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, those rum-like notes are still there. Like you get a bit of that burnt plastic uh, note on the nose that, that just, and that lighter fluid note that just harkens back to a rum style for me. But that, that big cherry note uh, is something, and that, those leathery notes are something that come in on, on Armagnac uh, prominently for me. This is uh, from France. It's A5.4, and it is an Armagnac. From an Armagnac barrel, I think they're using... Uh, It'll uh, be... Yeah. It will be French oak, usually yeah. from a handful of forests. Yeah. From uh, the, the Gaston region. Yeah. Yeah. Like Trance or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, even when it's good, I struggle with Armagnac sometimes because I find it too grapey. Yeah. This is not grapey at all. This, this is a lovely, lovely Armagnac. It is. I would happily sit and enjoy a glass of this with yeah. someone. And the other thing is, I think this is a spirit that if you, if you like smoking cigars, this would be a great spirit to sit and smoke a cigar with. Yeah, I'm not going to... Sorry, go ahead, Kurt. This is unquestionably my favorite drink of the night. This is beautiful. I would take Absolutely. this over the others as whiskeys. Mm -hmm. um, phenomenal balance here. Those just quick show of hands who here as kids. Here's a tasting note for you. Not a, Hopefully not a tasting note. Hopefully a nosing note. <laughs> right. um, changing kids' diapers, man. Remember that white cream in the little tub, that Zincofax or whatever it was called? Yep. There's a note of that on the nose here. And it's a really cool, like almost medicinal antiseptic kind of note that I'm finding in the background that I, I love it. It's cool, yeah. man. Yeah, that, you know, that zinc note that's like just in a, in a, in a heavy cream. Is, yeah. That's, that's, I think you're spot on there. That's a good call. Kurt, I'm, I'm with you on that. Um, there's been some cool, cool whiskeys in this range. Mm -hmm. I, I think if if these seven bottles were sitting out in front of me, I, this is the one I would probably have a dram from first. Yeah. yeah. yeah so Kim says penitent, which I agree with. Scott says pseudo cream or pseudo pseudo cream, and I'm right there with you. I've uh, uh, we've still got some of that for our younger son that's still in diapers. Yeah. I'm and one of these said, days. Yeah. Roy said de desertine. All three of these things are things I don't know, and I'm feeling really inferior to all of you guys right now. <laughs> I'm, I'm 18 years out of practice on this. Yeah. yeah. So, um, oh, uh, John was asking, what was the age on this one? Yeah, so it's a, that's a really good question. So it's a 2001 vintage. They don't actually give an age on it. 
Um, can't remember if they give a bottling date either, but uh, vintage 2001, because they can't give a specific vintage with Armagnac and a lot of cognacs, um, because they, a lot of the time, will be topping up the barrel or the cask that they put spirit into over time. This is all spirit from 2001, but it's not necessarily from one specific filling date or distillation date. And unfortunately, um, with this spirit type too, you can't really extrapolate an age because a lot of times it ends up in glass before being bottled too. So it'll yeah, sit in a yeah, a demijohn. Yeah, yeah. Um, if anyone's, if you're not noticing, I am putting the links to these products as I take them live on our website. Yeah, thanks for that, Andrew. Um, so you guys should be able to see that um, them as we go here. Yeah, this. So we had uh, another one from the, uh, I think in January it was a five dot two, and I'm, I'm. Can't remember the name now. I wonder if I have it up here. Uh, Must coated candy floss. Uh, sorry, it was from October 2020. Was a 5.2. So from the same distillery, uh, uh, but that one I think didn't have the same dryness on the palate that this one does. It's not bone dry on the palate, but it does. You get a little bit more tannin and and, it, and that dryness coming in on the sides of the tongue without it going astringent, which is really cool too. Really neat. My samples empty. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mine too. I mean, <laughs> uh, price on toasted marshmallows is one eighty seven ninety nine. Wow, going into number three now that the nose is is salt and char all over the place. Uh, now, I, I always think um, of this distillery. I think there's uh, some hints just with the saltiness and that in it. Yeah, I agree. Bro. Evan, hey. one other note that I'm getting mm -hmm. here is uh, um, I, just nosing this. It's making me think of Hayden Block and their barbecue sauce. Uh, for number um, three? For number three. And yeah. I'm, I'm trying to think it's their house barbecue sauce, which I yeah. think has got quite a high vinegar content to it too. Yeah, that's that's a good call. It's not the really good espresso barbecue sauce that they have, but no. it's the other one. It's the other one. one of the other ones. Okay, cherries, fairies, and salted berries. Uh, we are in the highlands. Uh, definitely knows is coastal. And uh, 13 years old from the 21st of March, 2007. At the bottom, it says, after spending 11 years in an ex-bourbon hogshead, this was transferred to a first fill Spanish oak PX hogshead for the remainder of its maturation. The, the sherry's there, but it's not like crazy over the top, at least not compared to espresso, but. And this is cast number 52.36, 52.36, and that makes it old Holtney Distillery. Mm -hmm. Cool. So, mm -hmm. so Kurt, going into this, do you think you would have pulled old Pulteney out of the air on that one? Do you know what, a, I wouldn't have based on most of the flavors in it, but the salinity in it is screaming yeah. on this one. And there's only a handful of distilleries that you would suggest maybe. One of them might be Bonahaven, but this doesn't have that deep oily no. nuttiness that I would expect with a Buna. Or on it Peter doesn't, Kalila. No, it doesn't have the, it doesn't have Kalila's citric mineral yeah. element. It doesn't have an Oben-esque, you know, smoky thread through it. I honestly think I would come down to Pulteney or one or two variants from a yes. distillery. Um, I, but the, the, the flavors are nothing like any Pulteney I've ever had before. Yeah. It's the salinity I, that's the driving force. The, the, the saltiness really, I mean, I don't know if you could pick out, well, maybe a little bit even beyond that does have a, a touch of earmarks of our cask. Uh, maybe. Yeah. Only cask to, to me, but uh, I might be stretching things a little bit there. Flip the script. Andrew, would you, do you think? You know, it that, that salt character is something that only Pulteney, like I, I find in Pulteney more than anything else. Mm -hmm. I think what would throw me off is that sherry note, right? Because I think for Pulteney, we what we see is almost exclusively bourbon cask, yeah. Agreed. And I and I, I and it's not a criticism of them because I think bourbon cask works really well with their whiskey, totally does. And and I mean, I, you know, as much as I love sherry, and I, I know a lot of other people do too, I mean the classic style for most distilleries where you get to actually see the character come through is that bourbon cask style. And because we've seen so few 
Pulteney's with Sherry, I think I would have had a hard time pulling that one out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So price um, on 52.36 is 158. Now, um, this one here, I've made it live. Mm -hmm. um, without going into too much details, this is one that is not going to last long. So submit your orders if you're interested through the web. Um, maybe do my staff a favor. And if you're going to order any other bottles from tonight's tasting, wait and do it all at once. So we don't have multiple orders. Um, but this is one that's not going to last. And you will note on the website, there is a note that says Calgary only members. So um, yeah, that's there too. And the last 52 we had was 52.29, which was called the Wicker Gram uh, in June of 2020. What a name. Yeah. It's uh, I remember you wanting it because of the name and yeah. it was interesting. It took a long time to open up, but it was to me, even though it sold out really fast, it was way over wooded. Yeah. Uh, that, that one didn't yeah. wow me. This one, yeah. this one definitely wows me way mm -hmm. more than that last one. Okay. On to number four, Spock's earwax. Uh, probably no surprise given the name and everything. This is the returning bottle in the lineup. That and the the giant uh, clue slash spoiler I gave. Yeah. When we went through this one, I got to say that was a. I'm glad that we put that one back in just because it would made for great conversation. I and think it, that's the it, most uh, people chat we've had in a, over one bottle in a long time. It showed well too. I think that's the other part is that. Totally did. Um, I don't. You know, Evan, was this one of the, the, the outturns where it was just you and I talking about them? Yeah. Or was so this wasn't one that we actually had people people had an opportunity to send. No. Yeah. And then for whatever reason, it was COVID times, it was busy. We went down a rabbit hole with it. And I remember Kelly emailing me the next day because she watches these. Hi Kelly, I know you're gonna be watching this tomorrow at some point. Um, where she was like, What what were you talking about? <laughs> to be honest, I don't even know or remember. Uh, I think it know. had something to do with a horse, if I remember correctly, which was, I don't know what it was going to that from there. But. You're not you're not talking about the, like, I think that was an Ardmore because there was. Oh, the, that could be. Because there was the Pony Club camp whiskey we had. And like, it had this burnt hair note on it. So it begged the question of whether or not the kids of the camp were eating a pony, like, and they were roasting it on the fire. But I don't think that's where... There was something about Spock's earwax that I think. Yeah. Anyway, who knows? This, this just shows how, um, if you put it in a different lineup, how much. Oh, it totally does. Sold, right? Yeah. Because I'm well, not surprised this one hasn't sold out. This, and, uh, I'm liking this one a lot more than yeah. I did in the first outturn. Like I, I remember in the first outturn, honestly, kind of being disappointed by it um, because I, there's been a small string of TNNX that we've gotten into the store that I thought have just been really good and have made me pay attention to that distillery. So I was really excited when I saw this one in. And I think that uh, not to give Andrew more credibility with his stupid ideas on bourbon, um, but I think the, uh, the, the charred oak on, this, on the finish did kind of harden this one up to the point where it just didn't have a finish and there just wasn't a lot going on. This time, at least maybe because of the lineup it's in, it's really mellowed to the point where those soft fruit notes come through. It, Evan, it also could be like to do with the temperature too. Like, yeah, very true. I think, I think we were trying this in like November or December and it was cold. Um, yeah, it definitely wasn't 30, 40 degrees out. No. Um, so, I mean, that can all, that can have an impact on it too. Um, but I, I remember when we had it, like commenting on, like it, it was just, I, there was something to do with the waxiness and, and yeah. not finding it as waxy, but yet tonight it is quite waxy. Like that really mm -hmm. is coming through. Yeah, that's, I think it's showing in a really nice way now. That's one of those things that I, I always talk to people when I'm leading tastings and teaching groups that are kind of getting new to it. The context is everything. Just because yeah. tonight it didn't show well, doesn't mean you're not going to love that bottle. It might be that you just opened it. It might be that it followed the wrong whiskey. It might be that it's mm -hmm. at a time when you've just had something garlicky. Context is everything when you're drinking these things. So yeah. if you can try them at at least a couple of different occasions before you make up a mind, it's tough when you're doing just a little tasting event, but you kind of look for the cool notes and go, yeah, that'll probably be amplified right 
there's some really, really sick stuff going on with this one. I love it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Don says cold temperatures make our diesel wax up at CP. <laughs> so maybe that's what happened. It just went uh, way too waxy for us. Um, anyhow, uh, Spock Cedar Wax 59.59, so 59.59 for the numbers, which is kind of cool, from TNNX Distillery, as I mentioned. Uh, I think I mentioned TNNX. If I didn't, I apologize. And uh, another thing that really surprises me for why uh, we still have this one around is that it's only 133 bucks. Pretty good price for that one. 10 years on, old. Did you say that? What's that? 10 years old. Oh, pardon me. Thank you, Cam. It is 10 years old. And the link well. for that one is in the chat there too. Yeah. So matured for nine years in bourbon before uh, the finish, getting it over that 10 year line in the, in the uh, virgin oak, essentially. Um, on to espresso to the power of four, which might or might not be whiskey at this point. <laughs> And even if it is whiskey, it begs the question, is it whiskey? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so I think it was even said in the comments what the story this is, and I kind of alluded to it as well. Uh, cast number is 30.110. So this is the first Glen Rothis we've had in a while uh, from the society. Um, 12 years old from the 6th of June, 2007. And this is actually a sister cast to a bottle we had a couple years ago. Uh, this is, uh, hold on here, Sister Cass 2, uh, 30.101 Slipper Sipper uh, from way back in March of 2019. And that was another Sherry Bomb, first fill Sherry Butt, uh, that was 64.3% alcohol. So just slightly lower alcohol than this one. Second time around, are you guys getting any sulfur on this? Nope. Nope. It's no. got those burnt, like, burnt yeah, more charry notes yeah. and charry notes and stuff. But sulfur, well, sulfur comes in a lot of forms, but it has neither that matched, sticky, you know, mm -hmm. spent gunpowder kind of note, nor does it have that garbagey, cabbagey, yeah. broccoli, Brussels sprouts kind of things that are the two main camps of sulfur you get, really, that are the most egregious and offensive. This has none of that. It's just really heavy charry notes yeah. i think well and i i think you're also it's you're straying into the tannins and i yeah. think some people confuse the tannins that you're pulling from sherry seasoned casks with sulfur especially mm -hmm. if they're really strong and i think that's where we're going with this and yeah and you know we, we were alluding to it earlier this is a distillery that um routinely a number of us have tried where the sherry is either over the top overcooked overly nutty or actually sulfured. And I, I agree with Kurt and Evan, this is not sulfured, no. but it is moving into that very leathery, very tannic style yeah. sherry. Yeah, it's, uh, I mean, again, I, I almost, this is going into whiskey territory where it's, to me, it's almost not even whiskey um, anymore. It's just cast strength sherry. But uh, I, I still think it's done really well uh, for what it is. There's no flaws that I get from the sherry cask itself. Um, for being so high ABV, it is still really well balanced for what's there uh, in an out of balance way. Um, and it doesn't go into what I don't like about this distillery, Glen Rothis, where you get into that sort of frumpy, dumpy, and just like labby style of spirit that they have when it hits sherry casks. Yeah. This one earlier, I had to bite my tongue when I said it was like, it had all the hallmarks of... Um, Mm -hmm. you know, warm tropic or like tropical or warm climate maturation. Yeah. Blindly, I, especially on the palate, I would guess Cavalan, honestly. Yeah. Oh, um, cool. Yeah. It doesn't have the same exotic spicy notes you get with Cavalan. It doesn't have the same hints of really strange, cool, rich fruits that are coming out, mm -hmm. but almost everything else about it screams Cavalan to me. If, yeah. and again, I tasted these all blind with you guys tonight. I would have taken a flyer on Cavalan with this one. Yeah. Um, Andrew, before I, say how expensive this is how many bottles do we have to sell so this is another one where there's a bit of a pinch point on it so once again um it's limited to calgary only members because everybody else had a crack um and uh if they don't take them i've got a waiting list for it much as we do for the uh cherries and salted berries so 12 years old, 6th of June 2007 i said as i said space side 30.110 for your numbers 
And uh, I mean, given what this is, I think the price is pretty darn fair on this one as well. It's 170 bucks. That's a no-brainer buy. Yeah. I'm sure this is gone, but uh, if it doesn't end up gone, I'll definitely take one of these. Mm -hmm. Cam, what did you think on that one second time around? Um, I loved it. I loved it the first time around. I loved it the second time around. Right on. I think oh, so man. far, so far, this out, this uh, outturn has been fantastic. Yeah, yeah, it's been a lot of fun. I mean, you know, there, there, you know, the first one was good, but uh, the last five have been spectacular. Mm -hmm. Okay, on to uh, number six. Hopefully, we don't break the spell with Apocalypse Cow. Uh, Man, Don's asking, note. just really quick, Don's asking, T and Anik is from what region? Highland, but Don, if you've been to any of my tastings before, remember back when uh, I was hosting the tastings, regions are meaningless. The Highlands are four-fifths of all of Scotland. Yeah. Um, so it's Northern Highlands, not far from uh, Kleinlish, which I, th I don't think we should read too much into the fact that both those distilleries sometimes have a waxy note, although Kleinlish definitely ha more often has one than not. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, don't worry about the regions. They don't mean that much anymore. Yeah. Except for Tinanic, Iowa, I mean. I will say regardless of, of uh, regions, mm -hmm. Tinanic is definitely a distillery to keep an eye out for, especially independent bottlings. We don't see an official, any official bottlings over on this side uh, of the pond, but it is mostly in Johnny Walker and a few others. Go ahead, Andrew. Um, I was gonna say we, we did. We chose not to buy any. There was a, I think it was a Diageo oh. 2019 release. It was an 18 year old and it was like 600 or $700. So oh, why didn't we get that? Out of principle, we didn't buy it, but I'm pretty sure Diageo's first stop, which is usually Liquor Depot, yeah. has it. And eventually they'll be trying to sell it at cost, which will still be too expensive. Yeah. Um, not Liquor Depot's fault, more Diageo's fault. Well, and Andrew, yeah. we don't have principles. Like, don't let Andrew fool you. We <laughs> just didn't have any pre-orders on it. That's true. Yeah. If we'd sold at least three bottles, we would have brought a case in. But yeah, and um, probably put it in a tasting. So it's your guys' fault. <laughs> yeah, you really let us down. Yeah, this was a fun game of pass the buck. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, let's be honest. I mean, yeah, yeah. and Inic is not. Even no. even McAllen eighteen doesn't sell for six hundred dollars a bottle. No, not yet. But but people are starting to be in the know. You know, yeah. the Tianinic, Glen Talkers, there's, yeah. there's um, Tormor for me, um, Manicmore. There's a handful of those sleeper distilleries that people are starting to catch on just to how good some of the whiskeys are when you can get your hands on them through somebody like the SMWS that releases these things. That Diageo, when they do deign to stoop down to us people and give us something it gets a stupid price like that so yeah. thank god for the indies like yeah. SWS, right okay before we move on to apocalypse cal brian uh seriously what does the archive mean if it's archived in our website it typically does mean that unfortunately it has been sold out oh um, but evan i think he's referring to the uh i think he's referring to the glenn rothis oh which um it could be that it just didn't save my change okay oh, so i've i've fixed that you should be able to order it now. Yeah. And so can can um, hopefully that answers your question too. That was just our fault, our fault there. Yeah. And I'm just double checking with the 5236 because it was archived as well too, and it's still active. Okay. So 30.110 should be good to go now. Yeah. Uh, so on to Apocalypse Cal. Uh, as they say in the lineup there uh, from Campbell Town. And eight years old from the 31st of March, 2011. And this is one of the three best distilleries in Campbelltown, in my opinion. You, you could even probably say two best distilleries. I mean, yeah, the other one's kind of a not really trying as hard as it could or should be. Mm -hmm. Well, I think you could say that about two of the distilleries there, actually. <laughs> that, that, is, that is true, that is true. <laughs> This is the try-hard distillery of Campbelltown. This is Glen Scotia. And to be the contrarian here, um, Andrew said Isla is the only region that matters. Campbellton's pretty recognizable too. Oh yeah, absolutely. That is true. But I mean, they only became a region. <laughs> As because, a big... Because yeah. out of spite, which yeah. again is... 
<laughs> I mean, basically, for those who don't know the story, um, Headley Wright, who owns Springbank, was annoyed that Campbellton was not considered a region. And he used as an example the Lowlands, which is a pretty big area. Yeah. Um, it's roughly one fifth of Scotland and said, well, why mm -hmm. are the Lowlands a region? They're like, well, they have three distilleries and Campbellton only has two. And, and Headley said to the Scotch Whiskey Association, so if we had a, a third distillery, you'd have to recognize us as a region too. And they said, assuming nothing would ever come of it, yeah, well, sure, yeah, whatever. Sure, Headley, yeah. I, I guess we would. <laughs> and so literally he called his manager, Frank McCarty, and said, Frank is the building that, uh, uh, that uh, uh, Glen Gyle Distillery used to be in yeah. still open or still available for sale. And Frank said, yes, he said, right, buy it. We're opening a distillery. So yeah. he literally opened a distillery out of spite, which yeah. possibly is the coolest reason to open a distillery yeah. that there is out there. It's, it's, hey, Frank, call Ben Wivis. See if they'll sell us their stills. <laughs> they stripped Ben Wivis of like yeah. everything. And they said they did it for like just like an insultingly low value, like a yeah, hundred thousand pounds. They got everything or something. Like that. Yeah. <laughs> but, but that's because they bought it from white and Mackay. Yeah, yeah. exactly. I mean, when was the last time white and Mackay was doing a good job of running it? There was well, of, of anything. <laughs> and and to be perfectly fair for, for Scottish people out there, that's actually relatively expensive for st stripping a uh, rundown distillery. I mean, they, they did Rosebank and Little Mill for free. Yeah. Uh, well, and or <laughs> You could also reference Imperial, which someone unlawfully stripped for free, but that doesn't yeah. really matter. <laughs> and I'm sure you've probably heard the story. Um, Andrew's probably been there multiple times too. They bought the old Bobby Mill at uh, that they're using at Kilcarran for like a dollar. It was like an old Craig Alecky mill that was dead or something like that. They literally paid or a pound for it. I think was the the actual contract. <laughs> Pretty cool stuff. Yep. Okay, so this is 93.133 for the Glen Scotia Apocalypse Cal. That's still such a wonderful nose on there. Mm. And price on the eight-year-old Glen Scotia is $149.99. And I'm just sharing the link in the chat right now. Perfect. Okay, and last but not least, back to a vintage dinner suit. Yeah, still green tea all over that nose. So this was alluded to as well. Uh, vintage dinner suit is from the Highlands. Uh, it's a little bit older uh, versus some of the other stuff we've seen from this distillery recently. This is 22 years old from the 23rd of October, 1997. And the cast number is 66.174, which makes it an Ardmore. Link is in the chat as well for that one. Mm -hmm. um, I start. I, I was trying not to talk about this because I mean, we're not trying to sell people on the age, but I think what I loved about this, and I think I know why it ended up further in the tasting lineup than it should have, mm -hmm. is you think Ardmore, you think moderate to heavily peated, but this is also moderate to heavily peated Ardmore at 20 plus years of age. That's, so yeah. that's faded a lot. And then the other element that I love is I love this style of refill oxidized whiskey. And, you know, Ardmore, I'll be honest, Evan, I know you're a fan. I know yep. Ian Snow's a huge fan. And I'm not sure if he's on the Zoom chat or just watching on Facebook. He was on there earlier. He's, he's probably um, just in the middle of ordering three bottles right now. Yeah. Um, this, this, this is kind of this this Ardmore is in is my jam. This is kind of how I want Ardmore to be. No, this is uh, uh, for me a little bit of a revelation considering we we've, we've seem to have Ardmore from the society that goes one way or the other, where it's got this hard edge minerality to it with like pencil shavings and pencil lead, or it's really fruity and fleshy and malt driven and cereal driven, um, where this one does have those cereal notes in it, but that age is really made it more complex or or it's a pony from the camp that the kids are eating because it died i mean <laughs> yeah. one of those three things yeah um what was the last we had a 20 year old ardmore a while back that was like charred something or yeah you really liked that one didn't you? i really liked that one yeah and i'm, I'm flat out gonna say it and i love that so many people like this one 
because I'm not going to be the jerk that <laughs> is sabotaging anything here. But I, I can't drink this whiskey. Uh, I like the nose. The palate to me is not my jam whatsoever. Well, that last one, uh, I adored it. Like, I absolutely loved that last 20-year-old Ardmore we had. Yeah, and I'm pretty much exact opposite of you, where I found that one too char-heavy. Uh, Fair. Which, coming from a bourbon lover, that's saying something. <laughs> but uh, it was uh, deep, rich, and burnt fruit. That's the I one. Good call, man. Good and uh, actually, no, I looked at my slideshow. <laughs> but uh, it's actually a sister cast of this, which is really, really? cool. Yeah. So, uh, build at the, on the same date. So This one has a cooler name, though. Yeah, it does. <laughs> Kevin, did so, you see the price on this? Uh, no, I didn't. Uh, thank you, Cam. The price on this is two seventy five. dollars And what was the age, Evan? Sorry, I missed that part. 22 years old. 22, okay. Yeah. I, it kind of makes me, even though I, you guys, Kurt and Evan know me, I'm, I, I eschew pants as often as I possibly can. But it kind of almost it's, makes it me makes it scary of, opening that office door sometimes. <laughs> I, I, it almost makes me want a vintage dinner suit. But maybe if I could get like a vintage dinner suit with like short pants. Oh man, that is so happening now. <laughs> I'm heading to Value Village and we're finding a seamstress. Uh, like the jacket better be suede, Kurt. That's yeah. all I'm saying is it okay. better be suede. This is happening, man. Or the crushed next, velvet. Uh, one of the, the next, two. The next keepers of the Quake turn. You need to like completely eschew the kilt and just go short pants. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll do the... Do, I'll do the lederhosen shorts on the bottom and then the Prince Charlie on top. Brilliant. <laughs> like Angus from ACDC. There you go. And you could probably yeah. rock that hat too, Andrew. I, uh, no, I don't know that I could. I've got a giant head. It's the Scottish battle weapon of That's... last resort. Have you seen <laughs> Angus? Yeah. I've never heard that. <laughs> Uh, check oh, you know you get well you get played, tangled man. up what have you got left you've got the glasgow kiss so anyway yeah that's 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 why they kicked the fergusons out of scotland was it was too many head dance in drywall just to be clear they 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 asked us to go to ireland and do something for them they didn't kick us out um but we're sorry about that uh, anyway at this point i'm probably going to bow out for the next this is my second tasting of the yeah. night so um i think i'm evan i'll let you determine how much more of this you've got but uh i'm going to say good night everyone Sounds great good. range buy that armagnac I, I i'm not joking i think that was the yeah. best thing in tonight's well, night. it was a cool lineup all together thanks andrew for sure all right thanks, see you guys okay well i am going to stop the video and stop facebook now as Zoom is kindly telling me. And I'll hang out for a couple more minutes, but uh, I went from...